You know how all big creators are now making bogus guides on how to get famous online and charging you thousands to be told useless information? Well today I'm going to give you the most absurd and yet completely legitimate strategy to abusing the YouTube algorithm for success. Today we will discover how to grow on YouTube without ever releasing a video. Welcome back all you majestic sausages to another classical spiffing Brit video where I condescendingly use all the tools of the platform to do the exact opposite of what the developers intended. Today I'm going to be revealing a strategy that that I've been perfecting on YouTube for the last few years that allows us to perpetually harvest promotion from the algorithm without actually creating anything. Today, I will teach you how to edge YouTube. Okay, so first, what is growth on YouTube? Many creators think that we just release a video into the void and an AI god arbitrarily says, ah yes, you shall be given 45,000 views, little video. Alas, no. YouTube does not grow us with views, it grows us with impressions. So what is an impression? Basically, every time you see a thumbnail and a title as you scroll through your various feeds and recommendations, that's an impression. And that is an opportunity that YouTube has given us to turn you, the audience, into a viewer. Now you might need to be shown a thumbnail multiple times before you're actually convinced by it and click on it. Heck, this video here probably took you several impressions before we turned you into a view, but that's just how the system works. To get more views, you want more impressions or to better convert those existing impressions into a view. Now, there's not really a way to artificially do something to get more impressions than you would normally receive, except there is. Today we're going to be abusing a little bit of logic that was created for the YouTube algorithm and we'll use it to yield some very unexpected results. So let's say you're going to premiere a video at 6pm on Friday. You upload and start the premiere at 6pm on Wednesday, a few days ahead of time so that your audience can get ready for the release. Now whilst the premiere page is there, anyone can check it out, but there's no video going to be released to the public until 6pm on Friday. YouTube knows this and your audience knows this. So 48 hours prior to the release of a video, YouTube will only be giving your premiere a handful of impressions, because no one expects you to sit and wait 48 hours for a video to start. But the closer to releases we get, the more impressions the premiere receives. This is, of course, perfectly logical, but the best way to track how effective this exploit is, is with the real-time views on a premiere or streams trailer. This graph here is the real-time views that we received on a trailer that we had on a live stream. But this exploit works on both streams and premieres, so there is literally no difference. The graph here shows a big jump. That jump there is the difference from a stream crossing into the one hour until start fresh. As you can see, we're suddenly getting a lot more real-time views. This also correlates with a massive increase with the amount of impressions we're getting. The logic is of course simple, but it does create a problem. Because if YouTube starts sharing the premiere more and more the closer we get to a release, then uh, what happens when we compare the difference between one hour from release and 30 minutes from release? Oh no! That's another huge increase in conversions and impressions, resulting in more views on my trailer, and more people waiting for the event to actually start. But but this is well designed and it can't last forever, because after just 30 more minutes of extreme push and promotion from YouTube, the premiere starts in earnest, and all we got was about one hour of really, really good push and 30 to 15 minutes of explosive reach. That's good, but also the way the system was intended to work, so it's still relatively balanced. But this got me thinking, if we get the most push from a premiere in the 15 minute window before it actually starts, and yet nothing 48 hours before, then why bother with the first bit and why bother even starting the stream. This is when we created the idea of the YouTube edging, a strategy where we perpetually teeter a premiere or stream start endlessly at the 15 minute mark. And oh boy, is it broken. So what are the results and consequences or benefits of this exploit? Well, having more people waiting for your video or stream might actually be more beneficial than you think. The more you do it, the more people that arrive and wait for your stream or premiere to start. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the fun begins. Sure, the initial views will be higher, but what we want is a juicy advantage, and that comes to us in the form of velocity. Or the snowball effect, as I like to call it. Think of any video on YouTube as a giant snowball. The larger the ball is when it starts, the faster it grows and the faster it will go. But for the YouTube algorithm, it's important to factor in virality. This is the rate at which something grows increases. The rate at which something grows on YouTube increases the reach YouTube will push the video. It's why videos hit the trending page, and it's why a creator you only watch occasionally might suddenly appear on your homepage again. So when we have a sudden larger than expected influx of views on a video, the virality alarm is set off and a huge snowball gets rolling at top speed. Now the results for us have been rather silly indeed. If I were to press go live on a stream, I would probably go live to about 1000 people waiting. But if I delay the stream and edge YouTube a bit, I can go live to 3000 people. That snowball is now three times the size and it's going to roll pretty fast. But a few weeks ago, we did a 
another stream where we edged YouTube for around about two hours straight. This stream didn't start with 1,000 people waiting. Oh no, 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 no. It started with 5,800 people waiting and the velocity snowball began. Now my streams average around about 6,500 concurrent viewers. So starting at literally just under that is a great advantage. But for YouTube, it wasn't just an advantage. It was a sign of a glorious viral hit. So naturally the algorithm sent out more and more impressions until eventually I had my most watched stream of all time, peaking at over 20,000 concurrent viewers. Bugger me sideways of a teabag, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I call a result. But there are limitations to this exploit, especially with how far it can actually take you. Because even though you could have infinite impressions, there is still a ceiling. YouTube gives out recommendations to relevant audiences, but what happens if you've pulled from that entire audience? What if your niche topic is just really niche? Well, then it would probably be useful for you to know when it is best to pull this exploit actually off, or how much you can even get out of it. And this right here is my magic little weapon that will give us all of the lovely information. This is vidIQ. It's a multi-purpose tool for YouTube that most content creators use for helps with tags and changing thumbnails and mass edits to videos. But for me, this is a tool that allows me to destroy everything. It was designed to aid with creation, but now it will aid with destruction. vidIQ lets us see the amount of searches per month that a specific tag is getting. This is our potential audience to pull from. The higher the number, generally the further we can go. We can also then see how much competition there is. If competition is high, the odds of someone picking you over existing or alternative content is slimmer. So we need to use this to find the perfect opportunity. So let's go find ourselves an opportunity. We're going to go find out the rising keyword section and this basically gives us a huge amount of rising keywords that have seen explosive growth on YouTube in the last month. But the issue is most of these aren't exactly relevant to us. So we're going to narrow down our topic to say role playing games because generally that's the kind of thing I like to play. Then we're going to maximize out the search volume and we can see that right here at the top, Farthest Frontier has a search volume of 4.2 million searches per month and its competition is low. This is a very, very glorious sign indeed. So I know that if I were to pull off this exploit, I've got potentially 4.2 million people to draw from and very little competition to deal with. Because of the sheer power of this exploit, there is actually a stupidly high chance that you will actually yield more than 4 million impressions. Heck, there's a chance you could start yielding 10 million impressions. My latest stream, for example, has almost hit 10 million views alone, and that was on a game that nobody's ever heard of, so imagine if I'd done Farthest Frontier instead. This is the power of pure data mixed with exploits. It's perfectly bloody balanced. Then, once we now have our perfect topic and perfect reach, we then need to work out when to execute it, and oh my would you look at that! It's a comprehensive list of when all of my viewers are active on YouTube. Thanks vidIQ! Oh, you shouldn't have, my friend. And with this, I can see that, generally speaking, across an entire week, it would be best for me to start this exploit around about 2 or 3 p.m. and finish it around 6 p.m. and then stream for about 2 to 3 hours. This is immensely useful, because you won't get anywhere on YouTube with just exploits. Exploiting daily Data is what truly allows us to break the platform. Now, for the purposes of this video, and because I like helping out other people pull off exploits, I have negotiated with vidIQ to get 99% off of their plan. Seriously, it's an incredibly useful tool that's been feeding me data for the last five years, and it's a huge thanks to the reason why I'm here at like 3 million subscribers. So yes, please accept my glorious gift. But now it is time for my grand experiment, the moment that I've been waiting for for the last few years. It's time for all of you to take part in creating a bit of YouTube magic. It's time Time for the ultimate edge. This video right here is what you will all raid into. When this video finishes, you should all go over there and just take a look at this glorious monstrosity. Because this video will be endlessly pushed back over and over again until a secret threshold that I have set is met. Upon that time, we will reveal the greatest video ever created. This video may never release, which would be a real shame. But what it will have is it will have an absurd amount of impressions and reach thanks to this glorious exploit and your assistance. To help with this glorious experiment, you can give this video a like and a comment and then leave a comment under the premiere. Heck, leave a comment each day of our grand experiment to maximize its endless march. And to reward those continuously waiting for its inevitable release, we will of course be handing out copious amounts of gifted memberships in the live chat, which for dubious balance purposes are handed out to those who interact with the premiere the most. Like, thanks YouTube, what a glorious interaction farming way of doing it. Anyway, this is our glorious experiment and YouTube exploit. So great Grab yourself a nice warm cup of tea and let's go write some YouTube history. I'll see each and every one of you over on the premiere.